Hello everyone, I'm Terry Duke, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a review of the freshly released game Gloria Victus. Now what is Gloria Victus? This game is a massive medieval multiplayer game where players fight alongside and against each other over control of the land. But it's also an RPG where leveling up, finding new gear as well as crafting it is just as important to rise to power. And whether you look at the main trailer that was released a few years ago or at the current previews that are on Steam, you can't deny that this looked like a gorgeous, epic game for any fans of this genre. But is it really? Well, that's what we're going to find out in this video. So if you enjoy the content or find it helpful, you can support the channel with a like and subscribe. Now, onto the review. So Gloria Victis being a massively multiplayer online game, I can say with confidence that if playing online isn't your thing, this game won't be either. But for those that are still interested, what I want to do is give you an overview of the game before going into more details about what I like about it and what I don't. Starting a new game, the first thing you do is create a character. So far so good. It's actually very easy to understand and the game also offers a series of questions to help you choose the specific character build you would prefer. The game then takes you to the world of Stoneholm, which is basically a group of islands being disputed by three large factions. You will spawn in the capital city of whichever culture you chose during character creation. Regardless of where you end up, the game has you go through a series of quests and tutorials to introduce you to the game mechanics. It's very straightforward. The gameplay combat is very similar to some of my favorite games, such as Mountain Blade. Blocking and attacking is done from all directions by moving the mouse around. It's fairly well implemented here, I don't have any serious complaints. After doing various quests, which earn you both money and some decent gear, the game proposes that you start playing in online events, and from there you'll get to either continue the storyline by doing quests given by NPCs, or you can join online events, which are both intense and rewarding. Or so I've been told, we'll get into that later. But that's basically the game. Whether you take part in online events or do quests, the goal is the same, to level up and conquer. The game not only pits you against other players, but puts lots of emphasis on conquering the world. That's right, each settlement in this game can be conquered at any given time by anybody. You will be tied to whatever faction you choose in character creation, but the remaining two factions will be up for grabs. And around each settlement are siege camps, where you can build siege engines to assault castles and fortresses. And once you do conquer a settlement, there are many layers of management, such as building facilities for extra defenses or producing certain goods. This is where the crafting section of the game also comes into play. The game lets you gather many types of resources, from wooden plants to animal skins and whatnot. And everything you gather can be crafted into different materials, tools, and weapons using a variety of workbenches such as fire camps for cooking meat or forges to make weapons. And when it comes to building stuff in castles, it's the same principle. Bring the necessary resources to a structure and you can build it, which increases your skills. And that is Gloria Victis. Choose a faction and go to war. Develop your own skills, find or craft some weapons and armors, follow the quests if that's more your thing, and occasionally take part in multiplayer events for epic battles. So now that we're clear on what the game is about, let's actually talk about the good parts of the game. For starters, great music. I know, not really relevant to the gameplay, but I do love a good soundtrack, and putting put in that mood in the menu, it starts off really well. But broadly speaking, while it is an RPG game, I praise the straightforwardness of the game. In a lot of RPGs, I find the UI a bit too complicated, and while Gloria Victis may appear confusing at first, simply following the tutorial quest early on made it very easy to follow. Inventory management is as simple as it gets, your inventory is full when all squares are taken. You can equip many different weapons and healing items into your belt for quick uses. And leveling up is surprisingly fast, and you can see the whole skill tree to choose what skills you prefer. So for new and veteran players alike, the early grind of the game just isn't that grindy, it's quite efficient actually. Armors and weapons also have a decent amount of depth to them that is easy to understand. Weapons and armors are divided by piercing, slashing, and bludgeoning damage, which makes it easy to choose what gear is best for you. And some armors will have strength and weaknesses, which forces you to adapt to your opponent but it's all very intuitive. The crafting part is also very easy. You got resources and workbenches with lists of recipes and requirements. So whatever you're trying to make, it's actually very easy to follow. Generally, I feel I can take a lot of time on RPG games to get used to the complex mechanics, but overall, this was not the case with Gloria Victus. I was capable of playing the game fairly efficiently within two hours of game time, so kudos there. The online aspect of the game is obviously the forefront though, and it wasn't until a couple of hours of playing that I started trying to play online. Again, the way the game is made, you pick a faction and everyone else will be hostile. So as long as you stay within your homelands, online interactions will be limited. But depending on how crowded the server you're in is, going to the 
the front line can be pretty chaotic. It's not uncommon to come across an enemy player and just have duels. But that's where I'll say the game's idea of making it possible to conquer lands is what makes the online part more appealing. Naturally, players will center around castles and you'll have frequent attacks and counterattacks, so it's not too hard to find some action in the game. And I do love the idea of siege camps everywhere that gives you the ability to build whatever siege engine you want to make your assault. On crowded servers, I can see how this can make the game truly awesome. So that was the good. Now the bad. First off, I gotta say, the performance is not ideal. I would struggle to hit 60 FPS in most areas of the games. My GPU can definitely handle the load, but the game just isn't that well optimized. And the constant updates are frustrating. The devs are working around the clock to fix issues with the game, which I do appreciate, but it's not uncommon to be kicked out of servers for maintenance purposes. It was so bad during launch day that I gave it a few days to stabilize. In terms of bugs, I haven't really encountered any, but there are some inherent problems with being in an always online game, especially when it comes to the quests. Because players can be in different parts of quests simultaneously, you will often see quest NPCs, such as bandits that need to be killed, respawn every few minutes, which, if you're starting to kill them all, means they will come back endlessly. It definitely ruins the immersion whenever it happens. It also means bosses will respawn, so when you kill them, don't stick around. In terms of combat, while I did say it was pretty straightforward, that doesn't mean it's perfect. The fights, especially against NPCs, are largely unimpressive. Unlike Mountain Blade, attacks can be charged for more damage, and so fights with NPCs look pretty lame and unconvincing as a result. I also hate that NPCs don't really do any damage to each other. You will often see NPCs beat the crap out of each other without losing any health, which is ridiculous. The AI in the game is overall pretty bad. Now, I did say the game could be pretty cool online, but my personal experience wasn't great. For starters, getting into big fights isn't that simple. You have to find servers that are crowded, then you need to find that one spot on the map where everything is going down. But when I did get into a fairly large group fighting over a fort, I quickly learned that the slightest full melee contact would lead to instant death, which isn't great either. I was particularly pissed that even using a ballista to defend the gate, it did not even do enough damage to kill other players. Are you kidding me? Duos were pretty fun and challenging, but big battles seem like a roll of dice for me personally, so that could just be my talent, of which I have none. And while coming across large battles in servers can be difficult, the game has online events which you can join, the most popular being called the Valley of Death, which is your typical kill, die, and respawn sort of thing, and it's often followed by a siege mode, which sounds like a lot of fun. I've seen some online and they really do look good, but unfortunately for me personally, these events aren't generated by the players, but by the devs, and they happen at random throughout the day. I played for an entire morning without ever coming across a Valley of Death event, and that's frustrating. You wish you would be able to participate in those, but you could find yourself having to wait for who knows how long. But at the same time, based on my experience, that one time I got into a big multiplayer fight, I failed to see how I'd perform any better in those larger events. Like I said at the beginning, if playing online doesn't appeal to you at all, then this game will not appeal to you. Or to me, I should say. For people like me, epic battles and sieges don't actually mean much if we're going to die immediately as soon as the battle starts. But to be fair, I will assume that it is my fault because I'm just not that good of a player. But even with that, I really wanted to try this game for what is actually a very cool reason. For the first time on my YouTube channel, developers actually reached out to me to review their game. That's right, Black Eye Games, the developers behind Gloria Victus, actually reached out to me through my YouTube channel to suggest I review the game. They even gave me a free product key. Now, because this was the first time ever that this happened to me, I was very happy to oblige. But now that I actually played it, what do I really think of it? To be honest, I've got mixed feelings. To me, the game drew a lot of comparisons with Mountain Blade, especially for the way you fight, but the part where you build stuff and do a lot of crafting and gathering resources, that reminded me more of games like Valheim. And of course, the idea of playing online multiplayer reminds me of games like For Honor and Mordell. But mixing all of those games together is what should make Gloria Victis really stand out as the ultimate medieval online experience. I mean, to be clear, considering there's only a few of them working on this, it's actually very impressive that they made it this far and made this big of a game. I could definitely see myself playing this game with the same group of friends every day, but I don't actually have that group of friends. And the game currently doesn't even give the option for hosting private servers, which would allow people to do their own thing. And having private servers would probably prevent the NPCs from responding constantly. But in the end, I would say for what the game aims to achieve, it's still did pretty well. The core mechanics are straightforward and very easy to understand, and if you're actually into multiplayer and good at it, you could still have some pretty epic battles in that game. 
but also in the current state, it's not uncommon to be kicked out of servers for maintenance purposes. The game often needs to update, and joining online events can still be inaccessible or frustrating from time to time. And the AI overall, especially when it comes to the animals, is definitely forgettable. So while I'm inclined to say that the game feels average, I have to take into account my own biases here. This game was not made for me. I'm a single player kind of guy, and I suck online. And while a lot of people share my frustrations, there is a growing community that seems to be having a lot of fun with it. And the developers are working around the clock to fix all the issues and keep improving the game on a weekly basis. So I have no reason not to believe that the game is going to keep improving over time and that it might actually reach its full potential eventually. If you're currently looking for an epic medieval online experience, then Gloria Victus might just do the trick. And that's about it for today. So thank you all for watching everyone, and especially big thanks to Black Eye Games for actually reaching out to me. No one ever done that before and I think it's pretty cool. I left a link to Gloria Victus in the video description for anyone who might want to check it out. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and check out the links to all of my other content in the description. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.